How are you measuring the effectiveness of your hygiene program? There are a variety of sampling techniques which would include swabs, contact plates or exposure sediment plates. However, swabs are the preferred method you can use to measure and check the effectiveness of your cleaning, disinfecting or sanitizing program. The advantages of using a swab over a contact plate for surface testing are The laboratory can test a swab for various different pathogens whereas on a contact plate you are limited to a total bacteria or fungal counts only. Contamination during transport to and from the sampling site is significantly reduced with a swab. Swabs are less bulky to carry around during sampling. A sterile disinfectant neutralizing medium can be used with a swab and not with a contact plate. The agar in a Rodak plate can fall into the lid of the contact plate during transportation to the laboratory, making interpretation of the results difficult. The swab method. There's the cotton-tipped sterile swab sitting in the sterile disinfectant neutralizing media in a tube. The sterile swab is wetted with this media which will neutralize the disinfectant that is on the surface that's being sampled. This maintains the integrity of any microorganisms that may be injured but still viable on the surface being sampled once disinfecting is complete. Remove the swab from the tube, making sure you hold the plastic end. You then roll the end of the swab over roughly a 10 cm squared area, rotating the cotton tip as you go. Replace the cotton-tipped swab back into the tube containing the neutralizing media. Make sure the plastic base fits snugly into the tube to ensure the swab does not fall out during transportation. Clearly label each swab sampled with a number that corresponds to the surface description on the information sheet. Place the swabs into an insulated sealed container, in this case a polystyrene head cooler, together with an ice brick which will maintain the temperature at about 4 degrees Celsius. Transport all swabs post haste to the laboratory. The contact plate method. Contact or Rodak plates can be used on areas where it is difficult to swab. It's essential that the contact plates have not been frozen prior to or after sampling. The contact plate must be held by the circumference of the Rodak plate at the base. Remove the lid, ensuring that your fingers do not touch the agar surface. Check to ensure the agar bulges above the sides of the plate before proceeding with sampling. Place the Rodak plate, agar side down, on the surface you wish to sample and apply gentle pressure to ensure the entire surface area of the agar comes into contact with the surface being sampled. Replace the lid on the Rodak plate, again holding the Rodak plate by the circumference of the base. Bind the lid of the Rodak plate to the base with masking tape to keep it sealed. Clearly label each plate on the base of the Rodak plate of the area sampled with the date. The sealed Rodak plates are then placed inverted inside an insulated container with an ice brick to maintain the temperature at about 4 to 8 degrees Celsius. They are inverted to prevent condensation from the lid contaminating the agar surface. Transport all contact plates post haste to the laboratory. Exposure plates. It's essential that the exposure plates have not been frozen prior to or after sampling. When you want to sample the air in a confined area, an exposure plate is used. What this does is pick up any bacterial or fungal spores in the air. These settle and stick on the agar in the plate. The agar contains nutrients to sustain the growth and integrity of the microorganisms in the air sample. To take an air sample, remove the lid from the exposure plate and leave it exposed to the atmosphere for 20 minutes, remembering that you are sampling the total bacteria or fungal spore count in the air of a confined area. After 20 minutes, replace the lid on the exposure plate, ensuring you don't touch the agar with your fingers or the lid. Bind the exposure plate with masking tape to prevent it from accidentally opening again. Clearly label each plate on the base of the area sampled with the date. The sealed exposure plates are then placed inverted, agar side on top, inside an insulated container with an ice brick to maintain the temperature between 4 to 8 degrees Celsius. The exposure plates are inverted to prevent condensation that may form in the lid from contaminating the agar surface. Transport the exposure plates post haste to the laboratory. When the samples get to the lab, the swabs are processed and incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. If you are using the contact or exposure plate method, the inverted Rodak plates and exposure plates are processed and incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. After 24 hours, the plates are removed from the incubator and are examined for bacterial growth and bacterial colonies are counted. 
The Rodak and exposure plates are then incubated at ambient temperature for a further 24 hours and a fungal count is done. The presence or absence of fungal pathogens is noted and recorded. Currently, to ensure the most accurate method of sampling is used, trials are underway to verify which one gives the best reproducible results, dependent on the surface being sampled. Even transportation can impact on the sampling technique being used. For more information on taking samples for testing, audits or more details about Mankem's products, contact Mankem directly or visit our website www.mankem.co.za.